So how do we process a roll of black and white film at home? Well, hello and welcome to this photo speed video with me, Tim Jones. Today, what we're going to be looking at is film processing, and we're actually going to be moving away from the digital side with inkjet printers, like the Epson I've got here, and we're going to be actually looking at the foundations of photo speed, of where we came from many years ago when the company was founded, and how we started in the darkroom, with darkroom chemistry like I've got here, the stop, the film developer, and the fixer, and actually how we kind of developed our chemistry for our wet processing. And I'm gonna take you through how to actually develop a roll of film. Now, for those of you who don't know, we actually stock Ilford film here at Photospeed, as well as everything you need to be able to process your own film at home and also to make prints in the darkroom as well, because we sell Ilford paper, we sell the chemistry, we sell the trays, we sell the developing tanks, we sell absolutely everything you could possibly need to get yourself up and running in the darkroom. But today what I'm going to be doing is we're going to be processing a roll of HP5. Now this is a 120 roll, but we also do it in 35 mil as well. Now I've gone out, I've shot a roll of this film. So I'm actually going to take you through how to develop this film using our FD10 film developer, our FB50, our stop bath, and our FX30, which is our odorless fix. And I'm going to take you through how to develop this in the safety of your home home, really. Another product I'm gonna be using is the Kaiser Film Developing Tank as well. Now there are other makes on the market, however, I do like the Kaiser tank. It reminds me of the old Jobo tanks and things, so it's very, very nice. Also, what they have, a little thing, in the actual spindles that go into the developing tank, it's actually got these two little kind of uh, plastic bits in here that make the film loading really, really nice and easy. But I'll show you that and talk you through that a little bit later on. But before we get started and dive in and how we go about actually developing one of these films in one of these tanks, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And don't forget there's new videos every Thursday coming out. We're on printing and everything in between. Also, if you haven't already, please download the free Art of Printing, a free ebook. So it covers everything from color management to framing, printing, and everything in between as well. So please just go on the Photospeed website. It's a free download and have a read of the Art of Printing. Okay, so let's dive in to film processing. So the first thing we need to do before we start using any of the chemicals or anything at all is we need to get this film here, which I've exposed, into this tub. Now we need to do this in perfect darkness, darkness without any light at all. The easiest way I find to do this is to actually find a dark room, if you have one in your house, with everything kind of blacked out so there's no light coming in at all. However, in most houses, mine included, that isn't the most practical kind of way. So there is another way, and it's a little bit fiddlier, but it is a lot more practical in, in, as well. And this is to use what was called a changing bag. Now a changing bag, like this one here, which is the Kaiser one that we sell, it's basically a big bag, as you can see here, and it's got a zip at the bottom where you can put your container in your film in one end and it's got some armholes at the top. So you pop your arms in and then you can do all your film loading sat in the light, but everything inside is gonna be perfectly dark. So absolutely fantastic. And they actually do work. Now, I would recommend always getting the bigger size of the changing bag because it's just a lot easier to move around and to actually load the film. Because what we're actually gonna be doing is inside this bag, we're gonna take the lid off and inside we've got the spindle. Now what we're gonna actually do is load our film onto this spindle. Now I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do it in the dark, but then I'll show you what is actually happening um, in the light as well. So I'm gonna load a kind of an old film on here so you can actually see what's happening. Basically, the film goes on to this spindle here, 
and you move these backwards and forwards like this and it loads the film on. And we need to do this, like I said, in perfect darkness. And then we need to pop it back in with it all loaded and then put the lid on, screw it down nice and tight so there's no light can get in at all. And inside, when we take the lid off, there's actually in here, there's a bit of a light trap. So there's no light can actually get in here. And at that point, we can do the rest of the process in the daylight. It's just the loading of the film that we need to do in perfect darkness. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna load the film onto this spool in here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll show you actually kind of what's happening inside, but I'm just gonna load the, load the film and then, then I'm all nice and ready to go and all nice and safe. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is put everything inside the bag and then I can get it loaded. Okay, little tip before I get started, before I put everything in the bag, what I like to do is put the spindle actually onto the column that goes sits inside and I put the clip, there's a little clip as well on the top here and I like to have that all loaded, ready to go. So I, I don't have to fiddle around trying to find the, the spin, the middle piece, the column in the middle, and I don't have to find the clip and things like that. So it's all there, I can just load the film on, pop it in, screw it up, and no danger, nice and quick of any light or anything like that happening. Just a little tip. Okay, let's load the film. Okay, so here I am, all in the changing bag. I'm afraid this isn't the most exciting piece of video you'll ever see because there's not really a lot to see. However, what I've got is I've got the, I've got the universal deb tank in here. I've also got the spindle already loaded. And then also I've got my roll of film here that you can't see because it's all in here. Now, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the piece of pa backing paper on the film and then I'm gonna find the spindle, the spool, so I'm gonna find which way round it goes. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna then just gently load it on to the spool here. And then I'm just gonna get it caught. It's a bit of a fiddly process, but I've just got it done. Just get it caught and then I'm just gonna ratchet backwards and forwards and then the film will just load onto here. Like I said, not the most exciting video because not loads to see, but I will do this on the outside as well. With, a, with an old roll so you can actually see kind of what's happening and what's going on. And then once I've got to the end, I'm just gonna, there's a little bit of tape on a 120 roll at the end. So I just need to find the end, which I'm just getting to now. And then what I'm gonna do is just unpeel this and then stick it down and put it in the tub and then I can take it out and it's all nice and light tight then. Okay, so let's get that done and then we'll be back in the daylight. Okay, so I've got my film loaded in here. So it's all nice and safe, it's in the dark in here. So now all I need to do is start the development process. So basically we're just gonna put this down on the table and then we need to start looking at the development. Now I'm gonna start with putting the film developer just in the top here. Now I need to mix this to start with. Now for FD10, the photo speed film developer, we need to mix it to one to nine. So I'm gonna be using 600 mil of water in here. So I'm just gonna mix that up now, and then we'll actually start the development process. Also, we need to have a look on the film development chart that we provide here at Photospeed with all the timings and things on, of how long I need to leave the developer in there because each film and each exposure of that film will need a different time. I know that the film development is seven minutes with HP5. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so here is the dev in here. I've mixed it all in. It's all nice and ready to go. Now, this is 600 mil at one to nine. Now, also I've just measured it with a thermometer as well because we need it around that 20 degrees mark as well because the temperature of the developer will also affect the time as well. So the warmer it is, the faster the development. So I'm looking at seven minutes. So what I'm gonna do is just pour this in to my pot here. So then I'll set my timer going on my phone and then we will leave it to develop. Now, while I'm developing it, I do need to agitate it as well every minute so what I'm gonna do is I put the red lid on like this, and I'm just gonna turn it upside down 
like this a couple of times every minute, then pop it back down. And then after I've done the agitations, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tap it just to see, get any air bubbles out that are still in there. And then that will refresh the developer every minute for the seven minutes for me. Okay, so let's get the developer in and then I'll start the timer and then we'll go from there. Okay, so the timer's going. I'm just about to agitate it for that first minute now, just backwards and forwards like this. And then what I'm gonna do, just tap it on the table like that. And then I just sit here for seven minutes and do that. So now it's coming up to about two minutes on my timer here. And I'm just about to agitate it again like this. Now what I need to do now is to get ready to actually pour this developer away and what I'm gonna do in my, in my jug here, my, what I call my stop jug, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour some stop in here, six, 600 mil of stop, and then I'm gonna get that ready because we need to be very, very quick in pouring the developer away and getting the stop in here. Now the stop is gonna stop development, that's what it's called a stop. And we're gonna leave that in there for about a minute to two minutes and just agitate it backwards and forwards and then just pour it back into the jug because we can reuse the stop. And when we pour it back in, we're gonna put some fix in. But what we need to do first is get this development out. So I'm just gonna stand ready and make sure I do that change really nice and quickly. Okay. So now it's in with the stop and then I'm just gonna put the lid back on. Okay, so now my stop's in, I'm just gonna agitate it and just get that little bit of agitation in there. Now, so while the stop's in, we're kind of in this state of, we can relax a little bit, to be honest, because now time crucial bit, the development has been done. The stop's in there just to stop that development. The next stage is to empty all the stop out, then put what's called a fix in there. Now this will dissolve basically the bits of silver that haven't been activated by the developer and create our negative for us. And then what I'm gonna do just pour this out and then put the fix in. And then at that point, hopefully, we just gotta wait for the fix to work. Now it takes about five to six minutes for the fix to work. And at that point, then we can actually start the washing process as well, because that is the really important process that we need to wash all the horrible fix off our negatives. Because if we leave it on there, it will just dissolve the negatives. And also they smell really horrible as well. Even though it's odorless fix, it does still smell a little bit. So let's pour this stop out and then I'll get the fix in. And then we will sit and wait again. And we will go from there. And hopefully after that, we'll give it a good wash for about five to 10 minutes. And then also then we'll take it off the spool and hopefully we're having pretty decent negatives. Okay. Let's do that. Let's pull the stop out and get the fix in. Okay, so it's time just to get the fix in. Just gonna pour it in. I've just poured the stop out down. And now I'm just gonna pour the fix in. Just about there, there we go, lovely. Pop the lid back on. And same again, really. I'm just gonna leave this for about five minutes. Just agitating every minute, just like this. Okay, so now the fix is in our tub. Just gonna agitate it. We've just gotta wait. Just a nice waiting game now. But hopefully, I always get nervous in this part because I think, oh, I wonder how they've come out. I just wanna have a sneak and a peek and things. In fact, you could actually have a look at this point, but I would just leave it that full five minutes before you take the lid off and start messing about. Leave it there to fix, do its job. And then what we're gonna do then is I'm gonna wash it in running water. Now I'm probably not gonna show that on the video because it's quite a long process. Basically, I'm just gonna pop a tube in the top and I'm just gonna wash it over and over for about five minutes. Put a little dash of rinse aid in there as well, which will help neutralize all the fix. So about five to 10 minutes. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the negatives out and then we'll have a look at them. Okay, let's get on. I've got a couple of minutes left on the fix, and then I'll just start the, pro the process of washing the film as well, so it's nice and clean and no more fix on there. And then, hopefully, I'll have some nice negatives to show you. Okay, so I've done my wash. Now, I purposely haven't opened it yet because I wanted to do the big reveal. 
with you watching to actually see if anything's come out. So this could go horribly wrong, so fingers crossed. Um, but the film's all washed, it should be all good to go. So I'm just gonna undo the top now. And then I'm gonna take out my spool. Oh, I can, I can see something on it, which is great, which is a good start. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pop the spool under here, just so the water doesn't come out. And then hopefully you should see there are actually some negatives on here. So it's okay, it's done a good job. It's not too bad, I've got, actually, I've got some pictures on here. I'll do some close-ups and bits as well for you. Um, I'm happy, so what I'm gonna do now is just go and hang this up to dry, just with a clip, and, and then I'm done. So here is the finished negatives, all dried. Now I, all I have to do now is just cut them up and put them in a negative sleeve. So hopefully, that has given you the basics of how to process a film at home using the photo speed chemistry. And hopefully then we can build on that and you can get into different kind of developers and um, different kind of techniques and things. But that's the basics. And as you can see is, it's quite easy to do hopefully at home. Um, just takes a little bit of juggling around with the, with the chemistry and things like that. So I hope that's been okay. And it's given you a basis of how to develop a film at home. Now, there are other ways to develop films and different chemistry to use and things like that. But I wanted to, in this video, give you the basis and kind of the basics of how to do it and hopefully show you how easy it could be at home. Now, as always, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to also subscribe to our newsletter and also, if you haven't already, download the PhotoSpeed Art of Printing, which is the ebook that covers everything from turning on the printer to framing to mounting and color management and everything in between as well. So don't forget any of that. And then also, don't forget that I've got a new video coming out every Thursday. So on that note, I'll see you next Thursday. Bye bye.